and it's now on. I hope you all can hear me. Uh, so as I was saying, it's going to be overcast today, a little rainy. Um, Saturday will be cloudy skies with a slight chance of rain and showers, um, high 67 degrees. Uh, Sunday will be generally sunny despite a few afternoon clouds. Temperatures will be a little cooler, high near 55 degrees. Let's move to this day in history. October 23rd, 1941. I have to say this is one of the Disney movies I did not see, uh, but Dumbo was released. Lisa surprised. I, Lisa's camera person today. Um, she's behind, behind the camera, everybody. Uh, Dumbo was released. She's surprised that I have not seen Dumbo. The fourth film in the Disney animated features, Dumbo was based on a children's book about an elephant with big ears who is capable of flying by using them as wings. Um, so that happened, 1941. I did not realize it came out in that year. October 23rd, 2001. Apple releases the first iPod capable of storing 1,000 songs. It was mind blowing. <laughs> I had a mini iPod and it was pink. Uh, the iPod came with a five gigabyte hard drive and was fully Mac compatible. Sales worldwide of the iPod now exceed 150 million and Apple iTunes has now sold over five billion songs worldwide. It was crazy. Also, just a reminder for everybody, we have iPods and speakers on all of our neighborhoods with beautifully curated mwah, playlists for all of you to choose. We have jazz, we have Spanish music, we have uh, classical music. So um, if you're in the lounges and you would like to listen to some music, there are some great playlists and songs on there. If you have any suggestions of something that's not on there, let us know. Um, and if you need help with any of the iPods on your neighborhood, also let your activities person know. We'll come by and troubleshoot them. Um, but Please do use them. Uh, music is great, especially for a rainy day like today. You just want to listen to some, some jams. Other things happening today. It is, not surprisingly, iPod Day. I didn't know there was a day, but it's iPod Day. So um, use your iPods on your floors. Uh, it's also Snow Leopard Day. Um, Boston Cream Pie Day. And this was an interesting one, I thought, which, you know, to all our good morning Hebrew home hosts, it's TV talk show host day. So happy TV talk show host day. We have two other hosts here, Catherine and Lisa are in the studio. Um, and happy TV talk show host day also to Wendy and, and me, myself. Um, also, October 19th to October 25th, this was really nice, is Healthcare Food Service Workers Week. Yeah, we just had a wonderful awe of in, live in studio. Um, so today, if you see any of your wonderful food service staff up on the floors, bringing up the food, I mean, there's so much involved. They have to bring these carts together. There's so much that's going on in the kitchens and they have to bring them up to all the neighborhoods and get the dining rooms ready. It's so much work um, and they are just so wonderful. And all the staff in food service just do everything with a smile on their face. Um, so happy food service a week to our staff here, our food service staff. Famous birthday for today, uh, 1925. Oh, Jimmy Carson. I left out Johnny Carson. Sorry, I combined uh, Jimmy Fallon and Johnny Carson. Uh, Johnny Carson, he is best known as the host of The Tonight Show. Um, he worked there for 30 years before his retirement in 1922. So it was his birthday. Um, birthdays for today, resident birthdays for today. We got a long list and then we'll cover over our, our staff birthdays and our weekend birthdays. Uh, today, Friday, 1023, our birthdays, Louise M, Connie P, happy birthday. Uh, Saturday resident birthdays, 1024, Lloyd F, Willa H. and Wilbert T. Happy birthday to our Saturday people. 
And Sunday, 1025, Joseph L. and Mary S. Happy birthday to all of our residents for today and this weekend. Let's move on to staff birthdays. Uh, Friday, 1023, we have, which is today, uh, we have Santa from IT. And then Saturday, 1024, we have Mikal from Finance uh, and Marie from Nursing and Anthony from Material Management. Happy birthday. Oh, and also Ashley Joan from Nursing. Happy birthday. Sunday, 1025, we have Brandon from Riverwalk Food Service, uh, Conroy from the Housekeeping Department, Tiffany from the Certified Home Health Agency, and Cheryl from Nursing. Happy birthday to all. Uh, let me put this down and get into our uh, meals for today and this weekend. So today's menus, lunch, you guys are looking forward to cheese pizza and a Caesar salad. I like a pizza and a salad. It's super simple or a pizza and a soup or a soup and a salad. Um, in case anybody was wondering what my preferences are, but cheese pizza and Caesar salad and for dessert peaches. That's what you guys are having today for lunch. Dinner will be country vegetable soup. That sounds interesting. Um, entree will be brisket, potato kugel, I love, challah and wine, and dessert will be chocolate cake. So that's our Friday meals. Let's move on to Saturday. Lunch will be beer battered baked fish. Try to say that three times fast. Sweet potato, parsley, cauliflower, and dessert will be sponge cake, challah and wine. Dinner will be cream of broccoli soup, California vegetable sandwich with potato chips, and dessert will be strawberry ice cream, challah, and wine. Moving on to Sunday. Our lunch will be southern fried chicken with seasoned diced potato. I love potatoes. They're just with anything. Any kind of way that I get a potato, it's really great. That sounds great. Seasoned diced potatoes, collard greens, Kala and wine, and for dessert, fudge supreme, supreme cookies. <sighs> My favorite soup to say. For dinner will be stracciatella. I got the okay from our camera person today. Stracciatella soup. Entree will be broiled salmon, orzo with mushrooms, and dessert will be a fruit cocktail. So those are your meals for today and this weekend. Uh, and our last segment for today um, will be our positive news story. This one uh, came away to me by Catherine. Um, I don't know, I, I think we've been taught, I might not have talked about it on the show, um, but I know Lisa definitely brought video of the Falcon we saw. Um, and then a few days later, Catherine and I saw a crow that kind of flew down on top of the sukkah and it went caw. So, um, and then in my backyard the other day, I should have brought pictures of it. There were a, like a million blackbirds. Um, I'll, maybe I'll bring pictures of it. Uh, it was crazy. So birds are all around us right now, as they normally are, but I'm seeing them a lot more. So this is a story about uh, crows. In 2014, a famous ornithological, okay, accomplishment saw new cal, cal Caledonian crows who <laughs> Lisa is um, is behind the camera nodding very uh, supportively to the hard words I'm saying uh, who as yeah <laughs> she's my pronunciation cheerleader <laughs> uh, who as outlined in Jennifer Ackerman's brilliant work the genius of birds are possibly the smartest of their race and capable of passing newly acquired knowledge down to immediate offspring, completing the Aesop's Fable Challenge. This famous test of intelligence and problem solving, which no animal had ever solved before, saw the crows drop stones into a water-filled tube in order to raise a floating platform of food high enough so that they could reach it. That's crazy. More recently, though, carrion crows have demonstrated that they can subjectively experience, process, and report on tasks or phenomena they have completed or seen. 
seen. This type of behavior is associated with the cerebral cortex. We're going to get really technical now. A region of the brain which not all animals possess, including birds. And it suggests, according to the scientists, not only empirical evidence of consciousness in birds, but that consciousness as we would understand it can arise from different configurations of the bird organ as a whole. Mind blowing. Potentially changing the understanding of animal intelligence and neurology. So savvy birds, though the theory of what designs enable consciousness has moved on substantially, substantially from Descartes' famous words in Latin now. I wasn't expecting that. Uh, cogito ergo sum. Yep, I got the nod. During the 1600s, the Latin phrase, which translates to, I think, therefore I am can be used to describe the recently reported performance of crows during a visual detection test. Two crows, Ozzy and Glenn, at the University of Tübingen, Germany, were trained to peck at, <laughs> at a red or blue target after they saw a light flash. Uh, Andreas Nieder, the scientist administering the test, then did something very difficult for even young children to grasp. He began changing the rules. When at first the objective was to peck the red panel when a flash was detected, Nieder changed it to blue, which the crows picked up on and followed before Nieder changed it back to red. Hmm. Furthermore, he would change the rule after the flash had already occurred or hadn't occurred, giving the, birds, uh, giving the birds a few seconds to review what they knew about the task and make the correct corresponding choice. This meant that they not only attached a phenomenon to a physical motion, but were able to review that in their head and could apply the same. Could you say logic or interference? interference, I can't read today, to the task again to continue pecking the correct panel. These results suggest that the neural foundations that allow sensory consciousness arose either before the emergence of mammals or independently in at least the avian lineage and do not necessarily require a cerebral cortex. Very interesting. In the corresponding paper published in Science Birdbrained, a, co a compliment, uh, during the task, hundreds of neurons were lighting up on the monitors, which tracked the activity of the cells in the brain where the crows were acting on when using the flashes with lights. But when a light didn't go off, the neurons remained silent. For example, no, I didn't see it. The brilliant work of the crows, Glenn and Ozzy, and Nieder was reported on Stat News, who talked with Nieder about the study. He says, I think it demonstrates convincingly that crows and probably other advanced birds have sensory awareness in the sense that they have specific subjective experiences that they can communicate. He says, besides crows, this kind of neurological evidence for sensory consciousness only exists in humans uh, and monkeys. Uh, indeed, Crow brains can contain 1.5 billion neurons, as many as some monkeys, with the possibility of crows and perhaps other animals outside the <laughs> mammalian order having complex, if differently formed, brains. It could change the way humans view our earthly neighbors and perhaps replicate the respect we have for monkeys and apes in other creatures. So, to sum it all up, Birds are really smart. Um, I know many of you, if you come down and see the birds that we have here, especially Yunga and the, the birds that we showed on the show, they're so smart, they do so much. Yunga can talk and understand things. Um, she understands when you're leaving her and she screams really loud and calls you to come back. They are just so smart and there's so much that we do not know about animals in the animal world and there's so much more to learn. So. Um, as always, please feel free to give us a call. Any good news that you've heard and would like for us to share on the show, you can do so by dialing 2813. Our, our line, our voicemail has been pretty empty, guys, so please feel free to call even just to say hi. It makes me smile when I, when I hear the voicemails. 
Um, if you're watching on YouTube, feel free to leave us a comment, hit that like button, or hit subscribe so you never miss an episode. Remember to tune into Channel 8 later today. Coming up in a few minutes, we have Catholic Services with Deacon George at 11.15, Your Hip Parade with Larry Appleway at 1.30, and Shabbat Shalom at 3 o'clock. And don't forget, you can catch this episode of Good Morning Hebrew Home on Channel 88 at 6.30 tonight, or you can always catch all the episodes on YouTube. Once again, this has been Olivia Cohen with Good Morning Hebrew Home. We will see you Monday, same time, same place, same channel. Cohen out. That was smooth.